So in this video, I want to go over the few strategies which I followed while solving USMLE questions. So I have done about 12,000 questions while preparing for both my USMLE step one and step two CK. Both U world questions as well as I have used other question banks like USMLE RX, AMBOSS, CMS forms, NBME style questions and other things. So while solving these questions, I found a particular pattern and the difference between you knowing something and you being able to answer something is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. So the particular things which I found useful, I want to share with you guys in this video. So this is one of the sample questions which I wrote for you guys. So this meets both the criteria of USMLE step one and step, and step two. And this question can be asked in both step one as well as step two. This is one of those common questions. So usually the clinical vignette starts with 78 year old male giving you the age as well as the sex and then it talks about why he or she presented to the hospital so here in this case it's lethargy then it will give quickly give you a past history like what uh, he ha he or she has and uh, then it will quickly give you a review of symptoms so no fever no vomiting or diarrhea and then on the few details regarding the past medical history then they will usually move into the examination so over here we can see blood pressure pulse and the other vital signs given and also the mucous membrane is dry so on physical exam also they are going to give you some sort of findings and then usually they're going to move to laboratory findings over here we are supplied with the cbc serum a few serum chemistry and the urine analysis and then the question will be asked over here we can see that the main question which we are facing is what's the diagnosis so i would like to stop over here and ask you something so when you see a question like this a big chunk of details so usually it will take you around maybe 45 seconds to 50 seconds to read all this so if i am correct the average time which you are going to get to solve a usmle question will be maybe 1 minute 20 seconds or 30 seconds at best so if you go through all of this information and if you don't use that time wisely it is going to be really difficult for you to come up with an answer this is like quite common nowadays and a lot of people will suggest you to do the same thing is i look at the question what is the diagnosis that's the first thing which i look at so right at the top of my head i know that i need to find the diagnosis while i go through the question so i am not searching for any other information sometimes the question might ask what's the next best step in that case the diagnosis is going to be provided in the question and you should be thinking more towards what is going to be your treatment or is a diagnostic step required so i know the question what's the diagnosis now i can read this paragraph and uh, go through the laboratory findings trying to find a diagnosis so the next and the most important thing which not a lot of people talk about is this the age the age and the sex this will rule out half of the other possibilities so when we get a question of a heart murmur and the patient is 70 years old that automatically brings the answer down to aortic stenosis maybe a few rare exceptions might be there but you get my point so a 20 year old from india or pakistan might have let's say mitral regurgitation or, or maybe even if it progressed maybe mitral stenosis around the age of 30 but a 70 year old will usually present with aortic stenosis maybe in rare cases aortic regurgitation so the point being look at the age that's very important look at the sex that is also very important so just by with the two details one which is provided at the end of the question and the beginning of the question we might be able to pinpoint on the diagnosis let's read a little bit further so he presented with lethargy that's important seven so another thing which is important while solving such questions is that you create your own mind map and try to summarize the question so after reading this whole line, I usually think 70 year old male lethargy. Next I go on reading. He has a history of Alzheimer's disease. Okay. His baseline, he is able to ask for his daily needs. That's fine. For the past week, he has been mostly inactive. All right. And he is lying in his bed most of the time. He has no fever, vomiting or diarrhea. Okay. So all of this, this is normal, right? So we don't really need to think about it so much. So till now, we have read like maybe three lines so my summary is a 78 year old male lethargy but let's read further a month back he was treated with ciprofloxacin for uti that's fine can be related to the case can be unrelated his other medical issues include hypertension type 2 diabetes mellitus and coronary artery disease 
may be related, may be unrelated. We don't know yet. Blood pressure is 100 by 60 and pulse is 110. Now, these two vital signs are definitely abnormal. So, some vital, something is going on. We can mark that or you can just keep it in your head. Respiratory rate is also a little bit on the higher side. His mucous membranes are dry. That's definitely going to be highlighted in this case. So, till now we have 78-year-old male, lethargy, low BP, slightly increased pulse, tachycardic, mucous membrane dry. Physical exam, the lungs are clear to auscultation and S1, S2 audible. No murmurs or gallops are heard. Alright, that's fine. Abdomen is soft and non-tender. The patient has no screen rashes and the laboratory values are provided. So, just quickly going back. So, this all past history like ciprofloxacin for UTI, this might be related, this might not be related. So, it's good to keep this in the back of your head as well as sometimes the other past medical history and diseases like hypertension type 2 diabetes mellitus and coronary artery disease this sort of information might be related to the case but from my experience this is not that usually tested reading till this should take you only 20 seconds or maybe 30 seconds at best and the summary which should be in your head is 78 year old male lethargic vitals abnormal slightly hypotensive tachycardic mucous membrane dry so complete blood count that's normal hematocrit normal leukocytes normal so that rules out infection so this is not a recurrence let's read the serum chemistry blood urea nitrogen is 60 that's definitely on the higher side creatinine is also on the higher side glucose is normal we can leave that urinalysis is provided protein trace white blood cells normal cost none so this definitely suggests some sort of a dehydration process going on. The last detail which is provided in this case is his serum creatinine one month prior was 0 0.9 milligram per DL. So the creatinine went up from 0 0.9 to 2.0. The BUN also shot up in this case so it's 60. So we know BUN creatinine ratio is important in such cases. It will be what 60 divided by 2 that's 30 is to 1 definitely greater than 20 is to 1. So some sort of a prerenal process is going on. So what's the diagnosis? I would say intravascular depletion. This is how I solve a vignette. I take a look at the question so that I know exactly what to answer that saves a lot of time. Some people suggest that take a look at the options that will give you some sort of an idea of the question you are dealing with. I don't like to do that. I like to have the question in my head and then start uh, with a fresh thinking. Once you see the options and maybe even when you read the first option that it's difficult to readjust to the question. So I do it this way. I read the question that they are asking then I go back to the beginning of the question and then I pay the most attention to the age and sex provided I cannot stress how important this is so look at the age and the gender look at the presenting symptom look at the past history if anything suggests otherwise look at the review of symptoms physical examination over here and then the lab values the, the abnormal lab values should stick out and uh, that's how you solve a question Thank you for tuning in. I hope this was useful. And if you have any other tips or trips up your sleeve, please comment down below. That might help others.